Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I decided to try to start building the O'Neill Cylinder that I had designed. The O'Neill Cylinder is 150 meters in radius, 1.2 kilometers in length, and comes in many parts, beginning with this base plate. But of course, as usual, I encountered some problems. Uh, here we are with the station carrier, a launch mass of 31,000 tons with many, many engines arrayed on those extendable, I don't know what to call them, arms, arms, legs, maybe. Uh, but anyway, off it goes. And the first problem was the immense amount of drag involved. And actually, it was much more drag than the station carrier should be getting. As it turns out, the back plate is adding drag to the situation, as we will see in comparison with the next launch. So as we launch from Cape Canaveral here, with Orlando in the background, you can see the drag in the far flight data is in many digits. It is a significant portion of our current thrust, and that was not acceptable. We were losing too much to drag, and so I decided that I would go with the Titan method. When we launched off of Titan, we had to uh, go at a lower speed in order to make orbit, and that seemed to be the best tactic in this situation. So, as I launched again, and there were many attempts to optimize the trajectory and everything to figure out exactly how much to throw down, what to limit to the drag to. And so ultimately, we basically hung out at around 150 meters per second for an extended period of time and turned very slowly. And that was what was necessary to make orbit. So you can see that I've throttled down there. And ultimately, once we get uh, past where a normal rocket would go way past the speed of sound, uh, I started throttling up. But the drag I tried to limit to about 20,000 kilonewtons, 20 meganewtons. That's about 5 to 10 percent of our thrust here. So I was able to get through it, but without limiting the drag there was no way we were going to make orbit. And I tried out a few variations, and this is the attempt that actually worked to bring the back plate up. The back plate is not that heavy. It's about 600 tons, uh, which is underdoing it quite a lot, but this is like the bare structure and then uh, the residents will have to fill it out, uh, you know. Some construction will be necessary. And as we separate it, uh, I do have an animation for part of that construction, so we bring the engines, tuck them in to the pod again, and then separate off the back plate and it has to extend its bits. Uh, the thing is I wanted to make sure the bits all had their own individual colliders so the whole thing has colliders and they were not uh, animated colliders. You can have colliders also animate and expand out but I didn't want to do that so each little bit has its own collider and it's all tucked into the the core portion there, and now that's all 300 meters in diameter or 150 meters in radius. I tried to deorbit this. Unfortunately, I didn't have any downward facing small thrusters to sell the fuel down with, so I just went to the tracking station and got rid of it. Uh, we don't have parachutes on it right now for recovery anyway, and who knows how many parachutes I might need. It is very heavy. So here are the core tubes. These are the next bits that need to be attached. After the core tubes, then there's the plate tubes, which come out of the core tubes. And then there's the plates that people live on. So I decided to array them like that because putting them horizontally would probably create more drag. So I was more drag conscious now. Having them stick out like that might mean they get torched by the engines a bit, but in Kerbal, that's less of a worry than having a lot of drag. So of course I have the far window up to see the drag, to make sure that I don't have as much problem. And this payload does not have as much problem as the backplate did. The backplate had way, way more drag. So instead of limiting to 150 meters per second on ascent in this part, I was able to go more than 200 meters per second. So that was good, and you can see the drag is way less than the 20,000 kilonewtons that I limited it to before. The reference area is about the same. So it seems to be reading the reference area right, despite the weird condition of the backplate. Unfortunately, since I lacked that drag, I ended up lopsided. I didn't plan my trajectory quite right, 
And so I had to do this awkward radial burn to make orbit properly. And we are high on one side, but that's helpful for rendezvous anyway. Thanks to the distant object enhancement, I am able to see the back plate from a great distance away. And so you can see it there. More than 30 kilometers away, we can clearly see the huge size of it. And here I'm pulling up alongside of it. If I get it all working right, it's going to be an interesting construction project around Earth here in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program. But right now, I do have some problems. Well, let's wait on that. First, we have to get the little tugs off of our contraption and grab onto each piece of the core tube in turn. And there's no real reference for that. I'm basically trying to grab onto it blind with the claw, as usual. And then a uh, little tug on the other side. These are just procedural tank tugs with some of my solar panels around them and RCS ports. But they're not really ideal to handle something of this size. They don't have enough control authority because of their location. We could use four tugs that would help. But right now it's really cumbersome. I had to relocate a tug to position it a little bit better. But I think I need to create special tugs for this purpose. Aligning it with the plate is hard too because MechJab doesn't can't really get the orientation of the plate when we're further than 200 meters out. Further than 200 meters out, it really doesn't know where things are exactly. And the plate is 300 meters in diameter. Uh, so at least the direction we approach in, it's not 200, more than 200 meters, but still it's hard to get around it and to have MechJab uh, see where it is to hold the parallel orientation that I usually use on Smart ASS. Well, I managed to get close to it and try to dock it, and it looked right, but it sure as heck wasn't docking. So, I don't know what the exact problem is right now, but we have a problem in this first attempt. And um, I tried to move the docking nodes in Unity so that they were further away from the collider of the parts. So the docking nodes are like hovering a little bit above the parts. But that still didn't work. I don't know if I have to relaunch the stuff to make it work or whether there's some other problem with the way I've put the docking nodes on these parts. That's also a possibility. So that's where we're at right now with the construction of the O'Neill cylinder. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.